Hello and welcome to this simplified and brief primer on patents. Everybody has a broad understanding that a patent is a document. This document allows your ownership of an invention or process to be recognized in court and enforced. This means you can control the dissemination and usage of your invention within certain limitations. Some view a patent as a way to exercise absolute control over something, whilst others see them as a way to increase the availability and competition of new ideas. Before getting into details on what a patent is, it is necessary to delineate between copyright, trade secrets, patents, and off-patent items, as these are occasionally conflated. Copyright is the right to control the dissemination of a creative or artistic work. Think books, videos, and music. This is controlled by distinct laws. In America, this is the life of the creator, plus 70 years. It means the creator gets the benefit for their life, and so does their estate, which is generally given to their children. On YouTube, it is anything that remotely looks like a publisher's shadow touched it. Trade secrets are actually items that anyone can claim as a patentable item if they were to find the secret thing, because no one in the public knows what it is. This is the risk of a trade secret. A company like Coca-Cola will not reveal what recipe they use to produce Coke, which means that it cannot be patented but if someone were to find the recipe, it would be an option. As described, a patent is a document that clearly identifies the inventor of a thing. On the other hand, off-patent means that document has expired. The first of these two cover the topics that might confound the issue of patents, as they are other types of intellectual property, or you may think they are someone's property, a patent is a document that can outline one of two things or both. One is the product that you have made or found, and this is exemplified by Nobel's TNT. The second is the process that you have used or created to make either an existing patented product or to synthesize something not patented. Taxol, a chemotherapy agent, is a good example of this. It is a synthesized version of a naturally occurring product. The process patent is generally weaker than a product patent. A process can be modified, changed, or otherwise worked around. This is how you create a product that is either already patented or unable to be patented. A product patent is better as no matter how you get to the final thing, it is still covered by this patent document. This means that the product remains owned by the patent owner, who can enforce their ownership through litigation. A product can be unique, but through a process that is not open to multiple approaches. Conversely, someone may create a very effective product through their method, and then someone else will create a production method that is better, and when allowing for a licensing fee, it might be cheaper which creates a competitive marketplace. This is widely applicable to chemical and biological processes involved in the petrochemical or energy industries. The best is a unique process and product that has been patented as you are protected on both avenues of approach. This is where the first of three requirements for a patent comes in. Novelty. To quote from Philip Grubb, the first and clearest requirement is that nothing can be patentable which is not new. In other words, if it is a known thing like a seed or a method of cooking, then you cannot patent it. On a more technical level, things like a known chemical reaction or a medicinal application of a plant are more difficult to patent because it is not new in the strictest of terms. Once you have your new thing, it must involve an inventive step to be patented. 
A good example of this is a novel engine with a drastic change to design and function which could be paintable, but a design that only changes an engine from petroleum to ethanol is not. The third and final element is industrial application. This last requirement is a product of European politics in the 19th and 20th century. During this time, Germany and Britain were having an economic fight over the processes that produced dye for the textile industries, among other things. Eventually, the courts became involved and asked if this invention could be applied in industry and could it create a monopoly. This evolved into a simple question of industrial application which matched with the purpose of a patent, protection of an invention that could generate money for the owner and foster creativity. Now, to tie this into something practical, pharmaceuticals. The medication developed by pharmaceutical companies is generally a novel product developed for application in medical industries such as hospitals and pharmacies. It is a development but a uniquely applied product which ticks all the patent criteria boxes. For full details on the process of this, see a video responding to Adam Ruins Everything in the top right corner. This situation is also an example of using existing medications such as dopamine inhibitors or vasopressin for autism, which are patented in a new way. This application is seen as a process and could be patented if the researchers could prove it met the criteria. This is why some big pharmaceutical companies reformulate or tweak their medication each year and can get a new patent for it. Regardless, once a company or individual has managed to isolate, refine, and prove their invention or process, they can patent it. The process by which this is done varies slightly in each country, but generally it is achieved by the following steps. You create your invention or process. You research into similar inventions and if nothing matching yours is found, you file for a patent. This document will have all of your invention details and proof of where it came from and how it is unique. It should include form and function as well. The patent office will then examine the known work, which is called prior art, for the same or similar ideas and decide if it is unique. If successful, you will get a certificate that states you have a patent. This patent has a certain time limit that varies a little by country, but there is a general rule of 10 to 12 years. This should be enough time to cover the cost of developing your invention and making money out of it. In some cases, such as a pharmaceutical drug, this can be extended at the discretion of the patent office. This is generally due to a decision by the regulatory authorities, such as the FDA, to require more trials, delay a public release, or allow a drug to be produced by multiple companies simultaneously for a limited period of time. As this is a government agency decision that adversely affects a publicly available product, the decision is therefore modified. It allows for the extension of a patent which allows the company to make enough money to justify investigation and later development of novel drugs, as the work done in these early stages is important for later steps described as they relate to generic drugs. The important part with this is that the patent has all the details needed to understand what an inventor has created and how to make a knockoff version if you wanted to try. This is also why patent protections are very strong in many areas. There is more on this later when talking about generic drugs. For now, it's best to understand the reason this is done is to foster greater competition and creativity amongst inventors. As an example, it allows a company to be creative in finding a way to make the same product via different production methods 
which they can patent themselves, but only pay a license for the product at the end, which is a good thing if their approach to production is cheaper. In this case, let's look at a pharmaceutical product that has come off patent. In 2018, Cialis, which you may better know as Viagra, came off patent. This has allowed other companies to figure out how to make the same drug. These same companies prior to that could have been using their own unique method to create the final chemical product that is Cialis. This would have allowed them to purchase a license for the product itself and sell it under their own brand name. This final point is perhaps the most important. Off-patent inventions are free game if you can recreate them. In the case of drugs, you need to prove that it is exactly the same product and then you can use the original safety data provided to get approval for a drug as a foundation for your application. There are further complications, but in general this is a correct and simplified explanation of drugs that have been patented and have now come off. The regulatory data used for the approval can be applied to a generic equivalent and this is one reason why patents go for so long. The data used for a pioneering drug that has broken open an entirely new industry in pharmaceuticals is essentially paid for in the form of a long-term patent for the work they have done and allowing other companies to use that same data in the future. This video has so far only treated the problem of local or direct competition in patent law. There is a whole other area to be discussed when it comes to international patents, patent law, and the problem of the TRIPS agreement. This video has also avoided the process of a growing and developing product, such as heart medications that are routinely updated, then newly patented and remarketed, particularly in America. That is well outside the scope of this channel. What is relevant to this channel is a growing area of concern in patents that are derived from biology and genetics. Patenting or trying to patent genes has been a growing problem particularly in the last 5 to 10 years. In 2013, the Association of Molecular Pathology and Myriad Genetics went to court. The court case came down to a ruling from the Supreme Court that said naturally occurring genes cannot be patented. But that raises a question. What of artificial, semi-synthetic or newly discovered genes? These questions will be the centre of arguments in the future. It is this grey area around what is a process and what is a product that has allowed things like the BRCA genes to be patented for a time to have allowed a five-year-old child to patent how to use a swing and the mess that is some of the growing modified medications in the pharmaceutical industry. It is necessary and appropriate that a company or individual should be able to monetize their work as everybody deserves suitable reward for their efforts. There is that, but there is also a growing trend in intellectual property to extend the rights associated with it well beyond the rewards one might expect or even be entitled to. It is a delicate balancing game between the greater good of not having protections for intellectual property and ensuring work is rewarded at a rate commensurate with the effort required and the niche it has fit into. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.